on a plane and Superboy and Supergirl. Or Superman. This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birthright. And you're listening to The Krypton Report. And you're listening to Krypton Report. things Kryptonian podcast, including Superman and Supergirl. We discuss games, movies, cartoons, TV shows, and comics. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Welcome to the Krypton Report. This is our special anniversary episode. We're at 25 years 25, good long. since Batman Forever. And since we've kind of been making our way through all the DC movies, we decided we'd do this one because of the 25th anniversary. We've already done Batman 89. Yes. And this December, I think we're going to do Returns. Definitely should do that. Um, and, and, and I call this Green Batman. And Solomon calls it the Green Batman because of the cover art. So... So, as you can hear, we have a full house tonight. He's being quiet, but on the line is um, James. Say hello, James. Yes, I'm here. Hello. Um, And I have Solomon. Hi. And I have Sayla. Sayla's there jumping around somewhere. And we have Brian. Oh, hey, kids. 25 years. Good Lord. So, um, I'm excited about this one just because this, this Batman movie is like, it definitely holds a special place because this was the one that really made me excited for Batman again. Because I, I've talked about it before. I, I had a very bad experience with Batman Returns. Um, so when this came out, I was 10 and, you know, my brother was seven and we had Batman and Robin, um, together. So it was great. Cause then we didn't have to fight over who got to be Batman. Um, you know, I was kind of obsessed with this movie, the McDonald's toys, the cups, I had the glasses. My mom has the set of four glasses. I told her to keep her, keep them. Cause I never wanted them to get broke. But like, this came out what 90, 95. Yeah. So I was nine. Batman eighty nine. I was only three. So it wasn't really. It didn't really feel like my Batman movie. So I was three. And Batman Returns was really dark. And I was. I don't know. I was ninety two. So I was six. So like this felt like. This felt like our Batman movie. Yeah, I mean, you were watching the animated series as a kid, like three years later after that started, boom, this movie comes out. Like, it was an exciting time to be a Batman fan, because this was more family-friendly. Like, I remember all the merchandise, all the Jim Carrey, uh, you know, stuff. We were big Jim Carrey fans, because, you know, he had the mask, Ace Ventura, like, this was our Batman film as a kid. Yes. You know, we had, you said we had the, um, Jim Carrey was on the rise, and it was just in that. I mean, I don't know. It just, it was such, I remember it came out the, the Saturday that came out. My dad took us to the movies, and that was the last week of school. So it really, like, kicked off my summer. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, and it was just night because, like, you know, my dad wanted to see Returns with us, and he didn't get to go. My mom took us, and that's, you know, it was a horrible experience. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> and this might have been the first movie where I was like, hey, I think I like girls. This this blonde is, yeah, she's pretty. Nicole Kidman. 95. So, um, but yeah, it was just really nice to experience this film. I don't know, Sayla. So, 
Yeah, as a 10-year-old, this movie was just, I mean, most 10-year-olds loved this movie. Um, uh, I remember, you know, let's say I remember the glasses and the toys. And, yeah, this was just like huge Batman. Like, I always remember having the VHS of Batman 89 and, and Batman Returns. Um, but then this one coming out in theaters... I was just obsessed with everything about it. Um, I remember I had a magazine for it. Was it the Disney and, Adventures? Uh, yeah. Uh, I can't remember. Because I remember. I can't remember what it, what magazine it was. It was a. The entire magazine was Batman Forever. Okay, because I don't know if I didn't have that one. I had the Disney Adventures. So I remember one issue came out and it was. It had Batman on the cover. And then the second issue came out, and it was the Riddler, because yeah. Yeah. the the first one was like more hero centric. Because I remember it had the one of the promo pages of Robin, and I remember I I've always loved Robin, but I was so excited in this movie. I had my mom like cut my hair to look like Robin's. I mean, it was just a buzz cut, but still, <laughs> the idea of like I wanted the Robin haircut. Um, she was really preparing you for the military. <laughs> so, but let's kick it off, guys. You guys ready? Yeah. All right. So if you're going to listen and follow along, we're on. I am at three seconds. And I'm at the Warner Brothers logo. Yeah, I'm at two seconds on the DVD and the Warner Brothers logo. Yes, the DVD. Nostalgia all the way. (laughs) We are watching the Blu-ray. If I didn't have a VHS. (laughs) We're watching the Blu-ray, but five bucks. <clears throat> Excuse me. For some reason, I bought this Blu-ray set from Amazon, and it's the Canadian uh, region. So five bucks bets that this is just the DVD quality on a Blu-ray disc. Okay. So, all right. No, well, it's definitely not. DVD quality. I said uh, I have, I have these. I have the whole four movies um, on DVD. And so basically next time I get them, I'm going to buy the 4K with the Blu-ray and whatnot. And yeah. You want to watch this on your Apple TV in 4K? You have to have fast internet for that. Oh, yeah. You live out of the sticks. I apologize. So are you guys uh, ready? Physical media, Brian. It makes it easier to control because I don't have to rely on the internet slowing down. Yeah, but your physical media looks like trash. Uh, that's because it's DVD quality, yeah. which... Looks fine to me. Yeah. Looks like I'm watching it when I was 10 years old. Listen, buddy, if it was up to me, I really would be watching on VHS. Yeah, but I was like, get the full of the song, you know? I have a VHS player downstairs, but the thing is, you have to have an old TV because hooking a VHS up to a smart TV and a modern TV, it does look like trash. it's horrible. It's, it's but, uh, all right, everybody pause. Here we go. Yeah. On four, we're going to hit play. So ready? One, two, three, four, and play. So here we go. So right off the bat, right I, off the bat, pun intended. I, I like, love that. Yes, I love that. The Warner Brothers going into the bat signal. Yes. Yeah, it morphs into the bat signal. I like how Tim Burton's still producer on it. <laughs> In paycheck I love Tim ever since I could remember. So, you know, Tim Burton, Batman, I was always like, yes. This is a, you know, I like this score. I'm, I'm not opposed to the score. Um, I just love that the names are different colors. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, this, this score is nearly... I remember this score as much as I remember Danny Elfman's Batman because, you know, yeah. this was like my first big Batman in the theater. And, um, <clears throat> you know, it's, you get this music playing, you get the, the, the big names flying at you, the whole thing, and then right away with the Batman suit up. I love the Batman suit up scene. I just think it's yeah. neat. The close-ups, the, oh, yeah. the getting all the equipment. I want them to do it again. Like, we're seeing the cave, the new cave. We actually, like, you can see the cave. and I love that the Batmobile comes up as he walks out. 
Which is, I mean, it's this sweet. Is a great looking back to you. This is like the first thing ever that really kind of taught me what a soft reboot is. Yeah. So I remember from... just thinking, like, I remember just thinking when I was a kid, like, you know, Cheesy line. this is the same Batman that comes from Return. <laughs> Trailer line, marketing line. That's all that line was for. Was for. You know, I, I had the drive through line. <laughs> The, um, this yeah, always I remember intrigued me. Thinking like, I remember thinking like, yeah, he he's got a new Batmobile because his uh, Batmobile was was broken into pieces and returns when he transform when it breaks apart and, and tr- transforms into the the Bat missile. Yeah. Um, what do you call it? You know, I always thought it was kind of weird how he drove out because I always liked the way he drove into his cave in the first one. And then, so Brian had an an amazing epiphany about two face in this film with the color scheme. It's very long Halloween looking. Yeah. And I had not thought about that before until this. Cause long Halloween came out, I think the year this came out actually came out in 95. I think it's just, it's so interesting. Like, you know, it's supposed to be continuation of returns, but yet the only people that are back is Alfred and Gordon, and Gordon's not saying much. And now Harvey Dent's white. Yep. I would have really liked to see the Billy. Yeah, Williams. I wanted, I wanted Billy D. Williams back. That would have been an amazing tape on. Oh, he still got paid, <laughs> but it's crazy. You know what? I mean, even if they had recast um, Tommy Lee Jones, like if he'd have been, if he'd have played it straight, you know, if he'd have played it even even closer to the animated series with with the Harvey and and the big bad Harv personalities, like. Yeah, I just feel like it's, just, he's, it's like a it's like a Jokerized Two Face. That's the problem. That's exactly what we just said uh, uh, earlier. Is everybody wanted to try to up Jack Nicholson and be Jack Nicholson? Now, I will say some of the directing in this is more it's more action oriented the way the camera is moving than what we've got previously. His ears are sweet. I'll say that. I, I've always liked this Batman cowl. This I, I thought the Batman, Batman Forever suits the this suit and then and then the um, sonar suit, the Panther suit as they call it, um, at the end. Uh, I always thought they were great. I had the I had the the um, um, I had the the action figures of uh, of the regular suit and the Panther suit. I love the bat, like on his chest in the sonar suit. Now, not a yeah, huge... it looks awesome. Now, once again, this is where we get our kind of James Bond esque Batman. With each film, he has a new woman, Doctor oh. Chase Meridian. Seriously, come on, you know, like. Michael Uslan, producer. I do like Two Face. Like we were talking about this, Solomon was asking us. Two Face is my favorite uh, Batman villain. Um, and I I love Aaron Eckhart as Two Face. Um, I just wish he got to be explored more in, in a live action medium. Um, right. You know, they introduced Harvey Dent in season one of Gotham, and he was like Jim Gordon's age. Oh, don't even get me started. And then, and, then they, and then he never came back. He never came back. Not even when they had every flipping Batman villain possible. Yep. This, um, it's like this version of Two-Face. Um, I mean, he, he's a little, he's basically just a bad guy, and, and he flips his coin Yes or no? But that's it, really that's what it boils down to. This two face. I mean, 
And then Aaron Eckhart's Two Face. It was really great, you know. It was just the way he was uh, uh, chance and fairness, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So he wasn't necessarily a bad guy, but he did fall and become a bad guy. Yeah. But still haven't seen like a comic accurate or like the animated series style uh, Two Face with the with the personality problems and and the like the split personality and like playing it half straight and, and half, you know, half violent, half bad. Well, there's inconsistency in the coin flipping and we'll get to it as, as the film oh, yeah. progresses. Um, I did like the way the, on the symbol here, um, the, the, his bat sim on his chest here. I just, I love this bat suit. You know what's crazy really about, about this? How it looks great. The cape looks great. What's crazy is, you know, everyone talks about Joel Schumacher putting nipples on the bat suit, but it feels like that conversation was only had in Batman and Robin. Right. Like, it's in this, but I don't remember anyone ever talking about it, about this film. It's subtle. You know? Yeah. But it's like, it's, it's on both, it's in both movies, but it feels like, when we get to Batman and Robin, that's where, like, everyone talks about it. Like, it's almost more pronounced in that. Well, that's because um, in the beginning... The coloring of, and the lighting is different. You're right. In the beginning of Batman and Robin, though, when they're doing the suit up, they show the nipples. Yeah, you're right. Uh, and then you see it right uh, from the get-go, and you're like, oh, and the suit up for this, you don't see it. Makes you, wonder, makes you wonder who was like, okay, it's an anatomically correct suit. It needs to have nipples on it. It was Schumacher. He, I mean, he's <laughs> up to it. You know, I think <laughs> this movie, to me, like, it's not the perfect blend, but it definitely has the better blend of the dark and the camp. Like, where they kind of start to slip to Batman 66 style. Like, it definitely, you know, tries to... Um, it has more of a balance. I feel like they didn't recognize that, so when we get to the next one, they just full-on camp it. Um, they certainly learned the wrong lessons Yes, from the success yeah. of this movie. And it was a Love success. Love how Batman can hear through a hearing aid through his cowl. I'll tell you one thing. Hearing yes. is expensive, huh. man. If Batman would took my hearing aid, I would have said, you just kill me. Okay, I can't afford a new one. I'm like, how do I build Batman? And I All love right. how I love how big that grappling hook is. Can we just say, like, where did that thing come from? <laughs> I don't know. He has, you know, he has, he has bat nipples, you know. I don't know. I don't know. I got nothing. He has bat nipples. You don't have a big grappling hook. I don't know. Look how thick that. Okay. Yeah. How thick that steel wire is. Where the heck he put it? I steel wire is like an inch thick. Is he storing it in the pocket in the cave? What is he doing? Right. Right. Then how do you get, how do you know that it would hold the weight of the safe? Plus the human being. Because he's Batman. Because he's Batman. Because I'm Batman. <laughs> and I also love that Two Face, you know, had a decency. To put LED lights on all of his gang members' guns so they can find him at night. Yeah, that's really well. That's really well thought out. I I do like how Gotham feels a little bit bigger. Like, it definitely feels bigger, especially this scene. Like, this scene was a big deal when it came out. I remember because it was using computer generated stuff and oh. layering, and but it just it feels more like a full city than the the way it felt in the other films. Um, I like the statues. I think in this they work a little bit better, giving it this more gothic, larger-than-life feel. Um, I think making a realistic Gotham is a very tricky. I think they pulled off beautifully in Batman Begins. Um, I think they pulled it off beautifully in Gotham, the show. That was the best part of the show. Yeah, I mean, City. they used a lot of natural lighting, even though they filmed a lot, like pretty much in New York. They still found they found a way to make it feel not New York. Um, I'm trying to think what skyline they used. Um, 
I, I, I know I watched a thing about it, um, but they used the, the whatever city skyline they used. Then they then they um, digitally added in um, extra water towers and um, statues and stuff on the buildings. Just that and the skyline that they picked. Like they nailed Gotham. I agree. That's one thing I'm excited about for the Batman. It's just because they're using Glasgow, Scotland. If I remember right. Uh, yeah. Now, right here, this pisses me off. This is like Superman the movie. Right here. Why is the Statue of Liberty in Gotham? Why is it in Metropolis? It's not the Statue of Liberty. It's the Statue of Gotham. No, Brian. I'm it's had Gotham on her forehead. Shape of Gotham on her forehead. I don't know. Maybe, you know, the French were feeling generous. <laughs> they donated two statues? Yeah. So, I, I, I like, this, this seems... Oh, uh, you know... This I mean, is dated. This Gotham's is, on an Earth where... It's the, the the Statue of Liberty is not in New York. <laughs> all right, all right, I'll go with it. <laughs> Look, it's John Favreau. I just know it's him from behind because I've seen this enough. But I thought this was. Oh kinda... yeah, I did hear about that. Yeah, he's in it. It's it's like a blink if you miss it. He's just there. That's it. <laughs> um. I like that you see Wayne a little bit more involved in his company, like actually in his company. You know, it's, it's kind of referenced in Returns when he's meeting with Matt Shrek, but you never actually see anything for, like, Wayne Industries. Oh, crap, it is, Barbara. Ed Bagley Jr. here is an actor I can never take serious. I always just see him as a goof and, like, a camp comedian. Uh, like, he's a jerk in this one, though. Yeah. So, I mean, it, um, it works, but, you know. Um, you know, I feel like everyone talks about how Jim Carrey's over the top as the Riddler, and it's not like the books. But, you know, I, I feel like a lot of ways he was just taking Frank Gorshin up a notch. Because, I mean, Frank Gorshin is over the top crazy as well. Frank Gorshin. Amazing Riddler. I love Frank Gorshin's Riddler. Car Jim Carrey kind of did play Frank Gorshin 2.0 a little bit. Um, how do you guys feel about him being an employee of, of Bruce and getting shunned? It, I don't like it. I just I don't like when like his villains stem from like Wayne Enterprises. Like They're too close to him. Um, Thank you. Thank you. I mean, it's a it's an easy contrivance for this um, to introduce the character, but it's not my uh, you know it's not my favorite. Um, I, uh, can we also one thing to take note as we watch this? Kind of look at the timeline of how fast this stuff happens, because it it feels like it's just a few days, but if you think about things logically. This is a, should be a good couple of months to maybe even a year of how events should take place. But it feels like, you know, a long weekend. There's the bat symbol. <clears throat> you know, it took me a while watching this to realize, like, that the Riddler is obsessed with Bruce Wayne and the, like the way he changes his looks and does everything Bruce does and tries to mirror him. Mm -hmm. Now you guys heard about, um, too many questions. The, the, what is it called? Like the red book edit of this film. No. It's, yeah, I've heard of it. I've never been able to find it, but it's supposed to be a like a fan edit. 
uses deleted footage and takes it more back to what Schumacher had a, in a more darker psychological um, version of the, of this before they change some things. And I think that would be like what would make that fil- this film better. I love this as a child. I still love it. That was yeah. so cool. I remember going to a water park this summer that this was out. And it was like, you're one of those where you lay on your back. I'm like, this is all I pictured in my head was I was Batman doing this. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Look at that. 200 miles per hour. Hey, he doesn't have to throw up at all. I don't know, I just, I like, I like when Gotham is more gothic looking, and, I don't know, Tim Burton really nailed it, man, and Batman 89, he just, he nailed it. And I bet you did. You know, like, and now, now you see the nipples. Yeah. I, I just feel bad because, like, here's our female character, and it's like, could she be even any more of, like, just, here I am? Like, you can't take her serious. Nope. Like, she's supposed to be a, psycho- a psychologist, a doctor, or a psychiatrist. I can't remember. Um, she's something. But, like, am I supposed to be able to take her serious in this role? Like, I, I can't. Like, oh, I can't. Solo? I think Solo is asleep. Solomon tired. I don't blend in a family. Goodness. <laughs> like right there. I mean, come on. Like. Okay, say that. Oh, bring it up past girlfriends. Have you guys ever heard the fan theory that these two movies are actually Batman movies made in the universe of uh, Michael Keaton's Batman? Yeah. Yeah, I don't believe it. I just at this, after watching Crisis, I've just come to the rationale that uh, it's a different earth. yeah, Batman Forever and Batman and Robin take place on another Earth. Right. So was the Earth 89 is Batman and Batman Returns? <laughs> Women. Thank you. Is Earth 95 then? Works for me. <laughs> I, mean, th- I feel like there was nothing. There was nothing scripted in this scene. It's just Jim Carrey and Daddy, Daddy, watch it. Caffeine will kill you. Hey, girl. So, like, if all, if all the things to watch in 3D, like that, for the first time, like, would you guys choose fishing? No. Never. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably choose prices, right? Yeah, this is just Jim Carrey being Jim Carrey. 
I don't think it was her features like this. Oh, I don't want to Come on, see? Price is right. Come on now. I can friggin' watch this movie anytime. Yes. Like, like you can see the problems now that you're older and stuff like that, but it's so um, fun, man. There's there's nostalgia. Yeah, there's nostalgia. It's fun. Um, I mean, honestly, the you know when you look at it beyond some of the some things like the biggest detractor from the film is the forget is, is Tommy Lee Jones's performance is two face. Isn't the only thing that's two face is like, there's two sides to everything. And he flips the coin. This, um, I, I had this part memorized. Left. You know, if your brain, Fred, I was like, this is such a weird, like plot to like brainwaves. I mean, it kind of makes sense, you know, he wants to be smarter, but it is pretty weird about going about it. It's, uh, it's, I'm, like, well, who's playing it? Paul Dano? Yeah. All right. I think Paul's going to crush it. He's such a good actor. He really is. I, I mean, I personally probably would have went with uh, Jim Parsons, mm. but uh, Neil Patrick Harris would have done well. Yeah, but I just I when like Paul Dano. When Paul Dano was announced, man, I was like, ah, ah, okay, we're gonna get something special here. We just need a better like a rhythm that breaks free from the '66. Because even even the way they did Riddler on Gotham was like a dark '66. He still had that, and I I like for the most part what they did with him, but still like, yeah, but Riddler, Riddler's not a split personality. No, it's not. It's not. And that's what I, that's what I hated. Like everybody was like, Oh man, the best part about Gotham is a Riddler and Penguin. They were Riddler at first. Is, yeah. But Riddler is not a split personality. No, he's obsessive, compulsive, narcissistic. Like he's an attention hog. He just, he has to, he has to prove that he's the smartest person in the room. Yes. Yeah, that's his downfall. Is he has to prove it? Like he's probably in 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 most or all respects, he's smarter than Bruce Wayne. Um, but because he has to prove it, because he has to put out cue, uh, clues and things like that, like and and lead him to him and try and get away with it, you know. Questions, Mr. Wayne. My work raises too many questions. My work raises too many questions. I mean, even the camera work has some Batman 66 is, six isms, with like the Dutch tilt and stuff. Put you in your place. <laughs> okay, this scene I thought was cool, but in all honesty, like as I've gotten older, the idea that Batman, like middle of the day, like I always took it that he came rushing in, but it looks like he was sitting there in the audience. Like, yeah. And don't tell me Batman's just chilling, sitting in the audience. Pretty out of place. Yeah. yeah, that, um, you know, some people are, <laughs> some people try to, yeah, do that. Um, Batman came rushing in, like, trying to save Harvey before it happened. But yeah, it looks like. The, the shot they used, it looks like he's coming straight out of the audience, like he was sitting there, waiting for his cue. <laughs> like, and action, Batman. <laughs> or because the visits all the time. <laughs> like, okay, so that dude right there, he's in Batman and Robin as a different character. And I hate that crap. <laughs> Is he one of the scientists? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Take this letter. You'll because find the other writing. scientist is the Bruce Wayne secretary. That's terrible. <laughs> the memories. It, Take this letter. It's in exact handwriting and the sentence structure. <laughs> yeah. Why you save me? Goodbye, cruel world. Yeah. 
I mean, like, that's sad. Definitely the worst cop in history, man. Like, this Gordon is... Batman 66, is, man. This Gordon is just horrible. Yep, definitely suicide. Okay. See, I like this. Bruce has actually worked, and I love that, full benefits to his family. That's against corporate policy. He's like, I know. Right there, man. That just shows that Bruce is, he knows something's off. He knows something's wrong, and he's still going to take care of his employee's family. And I don't think we get enough, like, you know, that was one thing I loved about Affleck. Uh, as Bruce, when we had that scene where he's like, you know, he asked. Get out of there. <laughs> he's like, is he getting his checks from the victim's fund? Like, and the fact that, you know, it seems like even in the opening scenes, he cares for his employees. And I like that angle, you know. We don't have a Lucius Fox in here. We haven't created more of Batman's team. Um, but I like seeing Batman uh, or Bruce invested in his uh, people. And that riddle was dope. It was one of those riddles when I was a child that I, I solved and I felt like I was smart. Like, I yeah. solved the riddle. <laughs> I am the smartest man alive. Because I've always said, like, if I was Batman, like, a villain I'd hate to battle would be the Riddler because I, I can't stand riddles. I had this soundtrack. I remember listening to this song on its own. It's just so weird. Uh, is it? Yeah, because, you know, like, sometimes you just enjoy a song, like, in the moment because it goes with what you're watching. But then when you hear the song on its own, you're just kind of like, oh, that's a weird song. Right. The real question we need to ask is, he has he has a Riddler bobblehead. He has a Riddler like yeah. What what are these machine. things? He has a Riddler statue over there. Like, where where did he get this stuff? Was there some character like from an old TV show that he bases thing on? Did he steal the idea? Like, there there's a Legends of the Dark Knight comic, like an annual one, and it's like. It tells the, the first time that Batman met the Riddler, and Riddler's in prison, kind of like going crazy. And, but in that, it says it says how when Edward Nigma was a kid, that his parents never paid attention to him. So his teacher gave him like a puzzle book, and there was like a contest where you he'd win like ten dollars or something if he could solve this puzzle. Or he would be like a, you know, number one student if he won this puzzle, and he ended up sneaking into the school at night and trying to solve the puzzle as quick as possible. And he did it like over the course of the week. So it was interesting that the Riddler is not only obsessed with being the smartest man in the room, but he will do whatever he has to do to look like he's the smartest man in the room. He will do whatever he can. He'll cheat. He'll do whatever. Real quick, that shot of Bruce pulling up outside her office is the only scene of this that's filmed on a location. Really? The rest is all back lot and soundstage. But that, I remember, that was a big deal about filming outside on a real location. It's so crazy to think that, you know, just... And then you have Nolan who's like, yeah, let's just uh, go to this building over here. When they got to the Dark Knight, they're like, no, no sets, no sound stages, all real. I mean, it's, you can definitely tell in that movie. And I think Batman Begins has the best blend of the two worlds. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh, it's just kind of neat how this movie, you know, just the style of making the film was done. There's our turtleneck. Can we, can we also observe how she's not trying to, like, uh, slut it up for Bruce as she was for Batman? Because he doesn't have a rubber. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nobody. Nobody. You get a chuckle. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> It's a total wacko. Mm. It's a technical term. 
Well, that's a good opinion, Doctor. And here's five hundred dollars. <laughs> He's obsessed with you. So, the Rorschach. He's like, Rorschach? Wrong movie. See, I think this is kind of neat. The idea of the Malaysian Dream Warden being split and almost two-faced. But that doesn't come up. Uh, would have made two-face a better villain. Who would have had this mirror of Harvey and him. And, I just, you know, you know I, under, I just wish Harvey is one of those characters that I wish they could introduce in a movie and really let him build so that when he does become two-faced, you have this established relationship um, between Harvey and Bruce, and then you have this relationship between Batman and Two Face. See, like, like I just read the the Long Halloween again. Like, Batman's devastated when Harvey when Harvey gets that ass in his face. Batman's devastated. Gordon is devastated. Like there's there's a bit in the comic where Gordon's like, I played cards with this guy at four in the morning. Like our wives are best friends. I drank with this guy. I barbecued with this guy. You know we had a mission to take down the Roman, and now Harvey's gone, and I'm never gonna have him again. And Batman's like, let's just stay with the task at hand. And Gordon's like, you're heartless, man. He was our friend. And like. Do you like the circus, Brian? The circus? Hey, man. I have always wanted to go to the circus. It's not the circus, it's the circus. It's always the weirdest line he says in this entire movie. And then there's Bob Kane's wife. The ringmaster? That's Bob Kane's wife? Yep, exactly. Gotham Gertie is Bob Kane's wife. Yep. Okay. So this is, you know, cool, like, um, like, oh, that's where he gets his costume from. Great. Um, I am a big fan of, like, how Kyle Higgins did it, kind of like the, the Grayson's costume was more of, like, an old, no longer in continuity Nightwing suit. Um, because, seriously, like, they take that exact same costume and just make it into the Robin suit. Um, and you can't tell me who you can't figure out who Robin is. Um, well, I, I I like I really liked how in the world of Flashpoint and Dead Man and the Graysons they had like Dick was in kind of like a traditional Robin suit. Um, his dad was in like a new 52 looking Nightwing suit and his mom, his mom was wearing like, or his mom was wearing like an old Nightwing, like a, the original 80s Nightwing costume. Like, I, I thought that was so cool. That is awesome. Dis disco wing. He has to disco wing, yes. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of crazy how their their suits, their the Flying Grayson's costume is exactly like what the Robin costume is gonna be. I just thought that was a nice touch. <laughs> and it explained to me why, and, it, and, I, and, I, and then explained to me why like he maybe switched to red in the New 52 instead of the black and blue, because in this new world that they created with Flashpoint, you know maybe. Subconsciously, when a new Dick Grayson was created, he, he remembered the costume of his dad. I mean, that makes sense. Um, you know, they said they, they put the red in there because all the Robins, like previous, had some sort of red in their costume except Dick. You know, you had Jason with the red hood, and he was really 
reinvented for the new 52. You had right. Tim with Red Robin, and then, of course, Robin, period, has Red. So just to kind of give them some sort of, like, color uh, scheme. Makes sense. Uh, even though that just means that Chris O'Donnell's suit in the next movie is, like, spot on as Nightwing, but whatever. Heck yeah, it is. Um, Here we go. Two-Face and the Flying Graysons are up top. Now, should have been Tony Zuko, but you know, if you're, if you're just paying attention. Once again, it's just one of those short, you know, short things that they do to shrink the story. Um, uh, of just having two faces. Now, I'll, I'll say this: this is one of those things. I like Chris O'Donnell. I like the idea of him as Dick Grayson, but not as Robin. Like, he is too old to be Robin. He's like 30 in this. I mean, he's definitely 20. You know, they try to play like he's like 18, 19, whatever, but still, that's an adult. Like, you know, there's a line coming up that we'll, we'll pick apart here, but like... Um, I don't really think he needed Bruce uh, to take care of him. No, he didn't. You know, he's looks pretty dang old here. You know, I I can accept like a 14, 15 year old Robin if you want to age him up some, you know, but he still has to be under the legal age of being able to live on his own. Um, because this Robin is a grown man. Yeah. You know, and we've never really gotten a film of that shows the great partnership of Batman and Robin. No, I love this. He yells, I'm Batman. He's Harvey, I'm Batman. But, I mean... Someone around him should have at least heard him say that. Yeah. um, I mean, that's... How do you prove it, though? Like, Batman. It's it's somewhat, like, out of character, you know? I mean, you can't say it because, like, it depends on the story. But giving himself up as Batman... I don't know. Um, I, I see it. I see I, it because I see that part of Batman's mission was always supposed to be to not let what happened to him happen. And right here before his eyes, he was still there. A boy is family is being murdered. You know. Um, now in this exact setting, maybe not, but the idea I could see. Um, Right. Nobody sees like Bruce Wayne do this, and the perfect guys are no, just perfectly I, aligned. Right I know, right. No, I do see it because there's been plenty of stories. I mean, heck, Arkham Knight ends with um, Scarecrow unma- uh, unmasking Batman for the entire city, the entire world to see. So it's it's definitely. It's definitely been around, but yeah, maybe just maybe that's it. Just not in the setting full of surrounded by people. No, no Robin story is best as as good as Robin's reckoning. I'm sorry. I really think this right here would have been or dark victory. Awesomely edited is if you would have slowed this down just a little bit and edited in shots. Like you needed to have, like Dick should have been there watching them fall and there's you could have edited in shots of Bruce having flashbacks of seeing his family killed like so that he is realizing right there he failed in a sense and this kid is going to suffer the same tragedy that he did I mean I used kid because that's what it's supposed to be but the idea if if you edit in right here as the Graysons are going down Bruce is seeing the alley Bruce is seeing his parents and right there Right there is where he should have been, like, seen that alley and, and, like, flash back to young Bruce standing over the dead bodies as he's looking Dick in the eye. Yes. And, yeah. And then you, like, have this scene right here of everyone moving in. It's all very visual. Like, you can tell these are planned, stylistic shots. Um, but... I, they, they really should just made... I mean, yes, that's outdoors on location, okay? But it's still a controlled setting. They actually, you know, the other shot was actually in New York City. So, just throwing that out there. I was going to 
and say, yeah, this, whatever mansion they used for this, it was a closed, gated yard, everything like that. They just set up for a shot. <laughs> uh, so how did you guys, there's a line coming up here. How did you guys uh, feel about this line that's going to come up here in a little bit? Oh, there's Alfred. You know, the other thing about this Robin is, once again, it's it's one of those classic, it's Dick Grayson, but, you know, we're going to pull uh, some Tim Drake. Maybe a little Jason Todd attitude. Make him a little over an amalgam, but we'll call him Dick Grayson. Um, you know Christian Bale auditioned for this role of Robin? Really? Yes. <laughs> That have been funny. I know that it was almost Marlon Wings. That was in Batman Returns. Right there. How did you guys feel about that line? First time you heard it. Uh, okay, so who's the Superman? Right, but just that's the first time there's ever been reference to another DC city or DC property in a film. I, I oh know. yeah, I was, I was excited. Up. Must be halfway to Metropolis by now. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, like the, wow, he. This they they should have started doing crossovers. They were gearing up for Nicholas Cage to be Superman by this time, weren't they? That movie, not yet. We were about there because I think it was the success of this that then kickstarted that because. You got to yeah. think that they started pre-production and were ready to start filming upon the release of Batman and Robin, and that's what killed Superman Lives. They pulled the plug on it yeah. because of how bad Batman and Robin performed. Well, did they even watch it before they released it? I mean, were they surprised? It's one of those. It's one of those things that they had the wrong idea. <laughs> They were, you know, they were like, oh, this is just like the old 66. They liked what they saw because they had a certain vision and idea. And then when they released it, they realized, like Brian said, and you said, they took all the wrong lessons from this and had a campy, fun, giant toy commercial. Hey. Yeah. Get, so, so you're telling me that Warner Brothers executives tried to put out a studio film and it bombed 20 years ago. Uh, yeah. I don't believe and, it. And, and it, it, right? They would never do that studios again. Studios never do that. They would never make those mistakes. Or make them again. No. No. Yeah. They would never make it a second time. In the same franchise, no less. I mean, really? Like, that's just that's just unrealistic. See, look, we've seen the Waynes murdered again. <laughs> mm -hmm. How many times do we have to see the Waynes get murdered? Uh, let's it's see. Like watching Uncle Ben get killed. Batman '89, Batman Forever, Gotham, Batman v Superman, Batman Begins, Joker. That's six times. That's six times on film. We've seen the Waynes murdered. Batman Arkham Asylum, Batman Arkham City, Batman Arkham Knight. I mean, if you, if you do that, you just got to get everything, but <laughs> on film, in the theaters. Batman the Lunchbox, Batman the Flamethrower. <laughs> <laughs> Kids love this one. You know, and I, I, I would have liked to see them get more into this... Uh, you know, Thomas Wayne's book. That was the whole point, was it was supposed to have a line in the book that Bruce reads that basically says something about, like, I want to stay home tonight, or but Bruce insists we go to the movies. Or so, it was something like that that was, like, that made Bruce feel like it was his fault. Because it's something that Thomas wrote about. They were going to stay home, but Bruce really wanted to go. Um... See, like, this shouldn't have been an epiphany he has later. He should have had the epiphany standing there in the circus. 
Like you could have recut that scene right there into the circus. But they're they're supposed. To, I mean, there's more scenes. Like we were watching the deleted scenes earlier. Well, especially the way, especially the way it was, the way it was cut and released. Um, Dick didn't even see his parents fall. Bruce did. So, I mean, like the impact would be on Bruce at the time. It wouldn't undercut the the fact that they that his parents died because he was up on the roof he didn't witness it I do like Michael Goff as Alfred he was amazing Alfred. the grandpa you always wanted yeah he said I flew in like a robin I do like that Alfred like the one good thing I will say about Batman and Robin is I like that they they tried to make it more move away from like Batman's pain of his parents, which is supposed to have been the theme of this film of him working through that and overcoming and the idea of his relationship with Alfred. Mm-hmm. Because we have the great line about Alfred saying, you know, I wish I could be out there with you. And Batman, Bruce, says to him, like, like not all heroes wear capes or something like that, referencing Alfred being a hero to him. And I just think that's a storyline yeah. that really hasn't been done, like, well, like, in, in film. Like, even About how scared he would be to lose Alfred. Exactly. Like, yeah. what Alfred means to him. Um, you know, we that's a storyline I think we did okay at with Gotham um, but I still think it could have been serviced better I just think that that is a uh, you know the, the Batman mythos and, and story is you know about it's about family but it's about you know the bonds you have for people um, and not necessarily blood family it's surrogate family pretty convenient they, that they know the route Batman's on patrol tonight yes you know, and chase him. It's one thing you come across him and you start chasing him, but the fact that he's that that Two Face is waiting under the bridge, and then Two Face's cars, and I guess it's contrived. I did have the toy of this Batmobile, and it lit up, and it was awesome. Yeah, <laughs> the reverse cam before we actually did reverse cams. Right. Uh, you know, it's, it's interesting, like, the dialogue of Two Faces. I remember this Batmobile had the little thing that shot out the front because it was like, you could, like, like when it shoots out the front to, to drive up the wall. Yep. The toy had a piece that shot out the front. <laughs> this is one of those Batman. I like it and I don't like it. Like, it, it's, it's one of those, like, you made it because it needed to be something different and you wanted to be as awe and shocking as the last film. Um, but I don't really, I don't like the middle fin up top as much. Um, on my toy, a lot of times I would take it off because it came off easily and I just had the two side fins, much like the other Batmobile. Right. I, I think the top, the yeah, the middle fin is is really the only problem. Otherwise, I mean, you've got a pretty awesome looking Batmobile, and it's got a lot of features. I totally agree. Um, Do you remember the first trailer for this film? And, and it's a car, and you know, it's back when the Batmobile was still a car. Yes, you're absolutely right. It was that nice blend of a car, uh, a larger than life car. Yeah. But if you go back, I we'll probably find it on YouTube. The original trailer for this, I remember used the the uh Bert or the the Elfman theme. Oh, did they? Yeah. <laughs> Captain Kill. That was always my favorite. 
question mark mean? This, the Halloween of 95, my brother went as Robin, and I went as the Riddler. Man, you lived the dream for you, man. It was a very Batman century Halloween. Sounds fun. It, it was dope. I miss when my brother was cool and wanted to hang out with me. Okay, so... I'm here. I'm, hey, I'm, buddy. Um, this is just weird. This is straight up 66 though. Like his hideout is split in two. His hideout is like, you know where it is. He has two girlfriends, you know. Drew Barrymore, like. I can't ever. <laughs> you know, uh, you got two cigarettes. Like, and he's walking down the line in the middle. Corsets, not that mind. Two different dinners. Like, it's a little. Too much. Yep. Like this. Is. Now, are you ready for something funny here in a minute? So when the Riddler comes in, if you pay attention, his gear, his box stuff, is already in Two Faces' lair. Yep. Why well, assume that? Oh, never mind. Nope. Says this is how I found you. It's it makes me think there was a the deleted scene. I've always wanted that suit. I love the jacket. I love the jacket, the hat. How about just some green pants and I'm sold? Yes, baby, he is bad. Um, I think if I don't if I remember correctly, they talked about the makeup for the Riddler's eyes it took like three hours to do. Because they wanted to layer it and make it pop. And if you look at his face, he has some serious makeup on there. Yeah, he does. Best of blood, then what? <laughs> Post homicide and <little> depression. <laughs> <laughs> That's straight Jim Carrey right there. That's spot where you left that. Yeah, spare my life just for a few minutes. I mean, you like you guys said, Tommy Lee Jones could be a good Two Face in another film. Yeah. Jania loves the Riddler. That's like one. Of, see, look, watch. Oh, look, they're already there. Yeah. yeah. And they weren't there a second ago when she walked by. Conservative. Good point. I just, I just have always been on the look of the Riddler. Thing. Yes. Just the green and the black. Like, oh, I, I love the Riddler. I mean, I do too. That's why I, I really want to see a dope version. If someone ever told you you have a serious impulse control problem. <laughs> so, what do you bring 3D TVs there too, or? Yeah, yeah for real. Must have, right? Where do the TVs come from? He set up everything in, in Two Faces Lair. I like how he already made like this, like from his prototype. <laughs> see, you know, look. Did you see how he said, I'll have a bit more? We. Okay. So, so always be we. Earlier, when he said, get over, we'll drive, there's just inconsistencies in his dialogue. Yeah. I don't know if it's him or the script, but like at times he'll say I'll, and there's at times he'll say will. Probably him. So. Who is? 
Now look, our hideout, our lair. Well, it could be me. For this, we should crush. Yeah, I mean, true. He said we there. Well, he said it could be the girls. Now this is Two Face actually honoring his coin. This looks like a scene from Batman sixty six. Yeah. Here's a good Here's one. Here's a good one. <laughs> and then Ninja now Laundry. This, this is a yeah. This is the test if you can be a superhero or not. If you can do this with your laundry. Man, there was a great deleted scene that we watched <laughs> earlier of Robin like working out and fighting in Bruce's gym that I really wish they would have kept in the film. He has a dryer. He's a millionaire. <laughs> I just, I just. Well, it doesn't seem like his washer's working very good either. If there's that much water still in his clothes. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> I mean, it could have been a really great <laughs> scene that. In all honesty, I would it, like this. Show me how to punch a guy. <laughs> it could have been a great scene of like just Alfred and Dick talking, and Dick being, like, "I can do it myself," and just like being used to being part of the circus and just being independent of it on his own, and like why explain why he hangs it out to dry, because that's how he did it in the circus. Like they didn't have the convenience of washing machines and dryers all the time. Like he had to make yeah. the best when they were traveling and it could have just been a scene of him and Alfred talking and bonding and just more of like Alfred learning about his past and like building so that you know you have this where Bruce is supposed to be the one kind of intervening and helping Dick um, but it's Alfred that's making the impact on him they also should have had him you know wearing the Robin costume Going out and being a vigilante on his on his own, you know, ride his motorcycle, trying to find Two Face, you know, and then Bruce finds out this other vigilantes in in town, finds out it's Dick, I mean, makes him Nightwing, you know. There's so much better stuff they could have done. I mean, this because he's just so dang old. Like <laughs> and th this right here, like, is actually a waste of a scene. You know, if you could have done a scene of, like, Alfred, like, just earlier, just watched Alfred walking the stairs and the door lock, and then he walks by and it's locked. Now, right here, just in realism, how long it would take for him to start his company, get this island, and mass produce this thing? Years. Five years. That's what I'm saying. Like, five years. That's why. You know what I'm saying? And now it's selling out everywhere. That's what I'm saying. Like, what's the timeline of this film? Like, I mean, if you had done, like, at the beginning of the film, like, the incident with Nigma, and then it was, like, three years ago, and then you jump to this where he returns to Gotham or whatever. But, but yeah, seriously, like, and just, you know, this is a little over the top. The whole green, like, brain waves in the air, like, and then the giant, like, Searchlights, Island, Mike. You know this is this is where it's like a little like. Who built it? Exactly. Too I'm much. And then like him just sitting here in this room, with it just being dumped into his head like that, like. You, I don't know if you guys know, but Joel Schumacher started out before he's a filmmaker. He was a a window dresser. For a, a department store, like he would dress, design the mannequins, the look, the displays. Um, before he got into filmmaking, huh. yeah, I think he was already an older man at the time of filming these films. You know, yeah. uh, now this is Dick. This is full on Dick Grayson. Yes. Now, see if you had just done this, like I said earlier, then you cut to this would have been great. But I, I love your idea of having. Dick sneaking out, going out, already looking for um, Two-Face. Two -Face. Because what happened in Robin's Reckoning, he was trying to find Zuko. Batman kept saying, no, no. Can we also say, like, one, why does everything come on when an intruder shows up? 
Right. Just, Why does the Batmobile reveal itself when an intruder <laughs> shows up? And we know it does it because it does it later for Riddler as well. But can we say worst entrance to the Batcave ever? Worst entrance to the Batcave ever. Like, it's not that far down. It's just a silver closet that you spin part and go down. I mean, come on. How awesome is the clock... The, the piano, uh, the piano, nice. the uh, the was it the Iron Maiden? Iron Maiden and everything we see. Excellent. Um. Uh, oh yeah, that was part of where we went to the fish tank. Oh, yeah, that was part of the Iron Maiden. I always, I thought that was the coolest one. I mean, I think those are all really awesome, you know, unique ways to get to the Bat Cave, but the Silver Closet is is weak. The Bat Pulls from Batman 66. That's still, still dope. Still my favorite. Still my favorite. That's still dope. And that was that was a nice little nod in the Batwoman episode of Elseworlds where there's just like boxes of stuff in her office and there's the Shakespeare head. Yes. Like, that that was a beautiful just kind of... No, I, I, I think that's the best. I don't think anyone ever talked about that. That remains pretty darn close, though. You know, this is like, this is like Bruce Wayne, like as Superman right here, of the idea that the woman loves both Batman and has an interest in Bruce Wayne, kind of. Like, which side does she really love? Would she love him more if she knew he was Batman? Does she actually love him? I do like this little observation she's talking about. Why would a man do this? It's like he's cursed. Like there is a lot of good stuff in here and like themes that just, I feel like really never get the, the depth of what they're really trying to accomplish. I don't know, Brian, Brian and I <laughs> literally driving the car had some deep dives about just the characterization of, of Batman and Bruce Wayne and just how uh, he is, uh, he has his issues. Oh, very much so. Um, you know, I mean, from the time he was 10 years old, he's had a single focus, so... Um, he, he's definitely lacked in, in a social life and, and um, you know, how it, it, and, and learning to deal with his problems, um, manage his problems, or at least his personal issues because he has such a focus on everything else. I do love this at the off screen. So, like, let's not get into the fact that, you know, this is a freaking Batmobile. It should be the most secure vehicle in the universe. Nobody else should be able to drive it. But he just steals it. Alfred lets him. The Batcave security lets him. He drives it all the way. He knows exactly how to drive it. Like, he a freak. It doesn't it doesn't really have a key or or anything. Just apparently anybody can just hit the switch and pull the lever and you can drive the Batmobile. I think and like the gear shift is the acceleration. 
Like I just pull back more and then it goes. It's just weird, man. Um, you know, when I was a kid, I thought that was cool. It was like, oh, you get to pull that lever and it accelerates. It is cool. <laughs> it's totally cool. And no one was like it's no impractical was, unless you're unless you're disabled, but <laughs> <laughs> no one would believe that Batman forgot his suit. Give me a break. Like this whole fight scene like screams the nineties so bad with <laughs> with all the black light and the <laughs> the neon and the makeup. Oh, that guy though when he gets hit it's funny it's got a the 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 makeup and the black light looks like a uh, a skeleton going oh with a surprised look on his face <laughs> that's funny <laughs> and then he just kisses a random girl like yeah. that girl was damn near alicia silverstone already Oh my gosh, yeah, she totally looked like Alicia Silverstone. <laughs> oh man, yeah. She's like Alicia Silverstone's sister or cousin. <sighs> I love I love this this is a good angle. Good entrance, good angle, just watch it. Like, it's kind of the only way they could perform, like, like, like the gliding kick landing type maneuver. Like, he pull, like, they pull off in BVS where he jumps up in the air, he's got the, the, the cape wide out, and then he brings his legs forward and kicks through the window. <laughs> They're seen in all the video games, and, uh, in the comics all the time. You know, they, they really should have focused on this. Like, you know, imagine I was fighting Two-Face. You know, if you would have been there, Batman, if you would have been there, they would still be alive. Like, that's, that's good stuff. That's good writing. And it's so good right here that Batman doesn't kill. Dude, you killed a whole bunch of people right here. <laughs> See, that's the thing, though. Back in these movies, and and even yeah, back in these movies, he doesn't even say it. Like, I don't kill. You know, like he does what he does, and. If somebody dies, it's not like he, it's not like he shot them or he threw them off of a building no, he just for them to die. Or, like <laughs> they're trying to kill him, and if something bad happens to them, oh well. He doesn't have to kill them. I mean, like he doesn't have to I mean, like he's he's oh. already plan. You know, he's already he's already okay with you know crippling them for life. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my favorite one is when he when he turns the Batmobile around and sets that dude on fire. <laughs> my favorite is in Batman Returns where he shoved the bomb and pushed the guy in the yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, look, it took me a while to realize. My favorite is in BDS when he comes flying out of the building and through the trailer of the truck with the Batmobile. <laughs> There's Bruce Wayne. I was my mole. That's so messed up. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, look at this is where you really see like 
He is obsessed with haircut like him. He's wearing the same suit. He's like, how's my mole? He even got glasses to match his. Yeah, you couldn't do that that fast. Like, one product that fast. Like, it just shows, like, storytelling, like, over time. How, like, in today's world, we demand more from our stories and details and style and reasoning. Back then, you just kind of took it like, oh, that's, you know, okay. I don't want to say surface level, but there was definitely a, a more lightheartedness to details and telling the story right do miss the do miss the days i mean you you like complex storytelling i mean it's great stories but you know good movies and fun movies don't have to you know spell everything out for you um like do you need to be shown and told everything i mean like okay like i don't, I don't need to be spoon fed my movies Yes. And he goes from the 3D TV stuff and he moves right on to placing images in the brain in a matter of days. Just a matter of days, he has new products. In a matter of days, he's, he's enhanced... The whole entire operation. What's the timeline of this day and movie, man? Too shame to try my machine. Yeah, see, um, like movies like this, like. And even for the passage of time, I mean, for me, like, I don't feel like you really even need, like, time stamps. Like, it starts off and then it's, say, you got a, a time stamp that says three months later or something. It's like, I, I just, I feel like during, like, the montage scenes and stuff like that, it's not like they were just busting into places, random places, and, and doing their, their stuff. You know what I mean? They... I feel like they would have to plan the heist, you know. So there's there's time in between mm -hmm. that it it doesn't take place over just a few days because it's kind of what it seem, you know, what it may seem like that, but it's it's actually larger, um, a, a larger period of time. I always liked in the Batman films, like the idea that. Batman only has to work on, like, two villains at one time, you know, like, while he's fighting Riddler mm -hmm. and Two-Face, like, the Joker's not out planning something, or, like, another villain's doing something else. Well, I mean, it's, it's really not very feasible, um, for him to take on so many villains. I mean, if it was over a large portion of time, but then you're still not taking taking them all on at one time. Um, it's like uh, Arkham Knight or something. It's supposed to take place over one night, but, I mean, it can take you 20-some hours to, <laughs> to take out everybody. 30, you know, 20, 20 something hours to take out everybody. Well, that's more than a more than a night. Okay, um, your hands will be on fire. <laughs> totally damaged. Slide down that metal. Yes. Give me a break. This band looks stupid. Um, I like this Two Face outfit. Um, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Like, to me, it, it makes more sense to like. 
the idea it's one suit, but like one of it's like scarred up compared to like his suit earlier, where it's like two different suits sewn together. Um, Your interest was good. His was good. His was better. that this is the um, first time Batman did martial arts uh, true. kicking and kicking and flipping and I mean more they, than just more than just a block and a punch yeah they, they've taken up the bat fight scenes in this film which is really felt and I mean it's really nice and I do enjoy it you know Batman feels more exciting here. Love that. Total Indiana Jones move. It, it, it reminds me of Indiana Jones, but also a little bit of like what they did in '89 mm-hmm. with some with some of the fighting. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Guy came at Batman, ah, swinging, chopping, and yeah, I just get kicked in the face. I like two faces get away. Uh, doctor, why don't you throw yourself at me like a little schoolgirl here and kiss me while I'm trying to catch the villain? I do like some of the, like, up-close shots of his eyes. I almost wish they just would have made her psychotic and made her a villain. I don't, like, a new villain, just, like, completely madly obsessed with him. That would have been a good way to go. I always did love this scene right here. Like, as a kid, like, I'd jump off stuff and just imagine this. Yeah, right. Because it was so, like, I mean, it was just a unique shot even of him, like, turning and flipping, and they had this all planned. Um, I like the idea they set a trap. There are some there. jack goons in Gotham City, though. Yes. There are. He's actually got some goons. The cape right there is sweet. Yeah. I mean, like we were talking about earlier about this film. Like, it's it's also great. Like Solomon fell asleep on us. He's had a long day, and Sailor's here fighting it. But like, I get to watch this and experience this movie with my kids. I get to watch their enjoyment out of it. And you know, they really don't. Love that, love that lens cut right there. Of him in front of the fire? Yes. Just like totally pissed off. Like, you know, they don't really get into 89. Um, and Solomon's asked me to watch Returns, but I haven't let him yet. Um, and, but like, he'll, he'll watch this one. And, and, you know, that's also my argument for Batman and Robin is it's, a live action Batman that I can watch with my young children. You know, in retrospect, like, it's fine. Uh, we have the adult Batmans, the Nolan trilogy, Batman 89. We have more of the family friendly in Batman and Robin. More of being the key word. Um, so we can just enjoy it for what it is. I did like this. Hi. He doesn't even take his earring out. <laughs> I do like... You know this... Yeah, how about Nightwing? That's a dope name. Yeah. Dick Grayson college student. He even tells him. should be in college. Why are you even living with me? You're old. I do. I did like this fact that we see Alfred patching him up, and he's wearing the pants. Like it's just kind of neat to see the suit like that. Like sometimes it's cool. Sometimes I don't like. He makes it to me makes the suit feel a little cheaper when you see it in pieces and see like the seams. Yeah. But I don't know that scene of just him standing up, just wearing the pants, is always kind of neat to me. Um. It's 
So where was this filmed, Little Peep and Tom? <laughs> ben, ben and his um, surveillance all over the place. Bat surveillance. Man, there was a deleted scene that took place right before this that I was watching. I was like, man, it's a good scene, but it's it's one of those, this scene is done well, but it's done campy. And I'm just like, dang, like that. Yeah, this just, just screams thirsty before we start using that term, like straight up. Like she is just throwing herself and... Um, no self-respect, man. Right. She's waiting for him naked in bed. Like uh, nine-year-old Brian takes me back. <laughs> oh, I'm a little <laughs> nine-year-old Brian. Like, nine-year-old Brian, I feel funny. Well, that was I'm a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> keep it, keep it G-rated, Brian. <laughs> um. I kind of felt like, oh, okay, so that's what a kid's supposed to be? I'm supposed to eat her face? <laughs> now, she has... I, I've been busy. I miss... She hasn't kissed Bruce, Bruce by this point. Yes, yeah, she did. No. Yes, yeah, she did. Because she kissed him. Wasn't, was she going to kiss him, or did she kiss him when Alfred called about Dick still in the car? Uh, man, I, can't I think she's remember. going to. I don't think she kisses him until we literally, we literally just in, the, this. in the house and after he had quit being Batman. Yeah, you're right. Cause I'm a little distracted, man. Right? She's just standing there in a blanket. Or she. Yeah. I'm a little distracted, right? I just. That's when I was putting Solo to bed. I understand. Look at him roll his eyes. <laughs> He's just like, oh, I can't believe this. <laughs> and then we get the scene, my least favorite Batman scene of all time. Right here. Here it is. That yep. smile. A smile. Give me a great Batman. He should have done it in the car. Like, there should have been another kind of scene of like him in the car. And then, like, you know, where Batman's like in a safe space in a sense. So you don't actually see. See, so, you know, like, it had been kind of nice if there had been some discussion about them both having a vendetta against Bruce Wayne. Like, you know, Harvey's history with Bruce or... What kind of man has bats? Okay, now this makes me mad right here. Like, this is not Batman. Okay. In the middle of fighting Riddler and Two Face, you quit. Like, just because, right. just because Chase says she likes you, you've not even talked to her or really solidified anything. You're just, you're just gonna give up and quit being Batman. Like, maybe after you captured Riddler and Two Face, but there's no discussion about money to hire more cops or, you know. And you think, foundation, you know, really. You know, there's... there's just, yeah, that's the thing. There's the police department, even even during Batman's tenure, years worth of his tenure, like, the police department is always got corrupt cops. Like, you just hire more cops, then you're in Gotham, you're going to get more corrupt cops. <laughs> you know, like... Um, so I mean that's just something that always irritated me um, was just in the middle of you know to fighting it wasn't even like he thought he captured them or he thought he eliminated them oh look it's Halloween um, 
Happy Halloween. You know, and then here, you know, Dick steals his costume. He takes his costume back. I'm very surprised he didn't steal, like, a bat suit. Like, it would have been kind of neat if he would have stole, like, you know, that would have been a cool scene. Like, he takes one of the bat suits. Because see how the symbol's attached to the cowl? Mm Mm-hmm. If he took one of the bat suits and we saw him, like, repainting it or something to make his own suit. And that's where he got, you know, his Robin suit from. Uh, you know, because he just, you know, he's a, he has his motorcycle and he's leaving. Um, I just think there is a really great Dick Grayson and Bruce Wayne story to tell on film that we have yet to get. We always get it always gets danced around, you know. Titans is kind of the aftermath of the Bruce Wayne Dick Grayson relationship. Um, it's like the third chapter. I want to see a thirty-something Bruce with a twelve-year-old Dick. See, I, I give me a twenty-five-year-old Bruce with a fifteen-year-old Dick Grayson because you know I like the idea oh, my that bad. my bad, I think you're wrong, whatever. I'm just saying I like the idea of. Dick Grayson being a little bit older and Bruce being a little bit younger and solidifying more of the brother's mentality than the father-son angle. Um, Yeah, we've talked about this. You know, especially now in comics where Robin is Batman's actual son, I think having the angle of Bruce and Dick being a brother, because Bruce being an only child... And being that older brother mentor figure um, compared to actually trying to parent. Um, Nobody sees these guys off to the side. Don't show up at the back of your back cameras. See, I, I like this of just um, the whole, like, it's happening again. Let it break through. It had been kind of neat if we had gotten more of this other than that one scene with him and Alfred and then kind of teased at it when he was in her place. It's just there was a story here. They were working on something with Bruce's mental just working through his parents that they just kind of eliminated. I do like seeing him fall into the the cave. It looks like he fell really far. Shit broke his dang leg. Mm-hmm. That's a cool shot. The, the cave is cool, and I always like like the animated series, how Wayne Manor's kind of like on the edge of town, kind of on a cliff, so you have like the idea of why there's a cave. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, even in the dark night, you know, is, is Wayne Manor even in city limits? That's, dude, there's a shot in Batman Begins that every time it's up, I point it out. It's a reverse shot from the from the mansion that shows you that they are definitely in the English countryside and there is no city nearby. There is nothing but open country around. It's a wide shot and you can't hide it. Bruce, tell me what's going on, but let me kiss you so you can't speak. Here's where she has her epiphany. That's it. I remember.
that's, that's like the superhero trope, isn't it? The girl kisses you and knows who you are. Oh, come on, Alfred. You're better than this. Stunt, man. Trick. You know what? That'd actually be kind of a... If you think about it, like, um... If you wanted to create new Batman villains, like, um... Like, sidekicks or something, uh, of, like, the Scarecrow or something, one could be Trick and one could be Treat. That'd be interesting. This thing made no sense to me. Like, it's not like, automatically opens the door. It's not a digital lock, lock, you know, that's on the door. But it's not an electronic lock, so. I like how they all went to one side. And there we have the Bat Cave coming to life. <laughs> Shut up. The giant bat on the wall. I mean, at least, you know, he hits a button on his little on his little cane and the computers start coming on. So wasn't they just all everything opened up for him at that moment? <laughs> that that would hurt the table in the face. See, and he keeps flipping it so he gets what he wants. Right, but he's you never hear what he's flipping it for, too. You know, you could argue that he's asking, like he's posing different questions to himself. Like, do I kill? Do I shoot? Do I sit? Like, you know, but we never see. We just see him flipping. Um, which is one of my problems is he takes the coin as an absolute... That's part of his psychosis is he has to obey the the coin. That's why it's his Achilles heel. Yeah, this was a little much. The whole picture thing with the music. Yeah. His shoes are pretty sweet. She was on fire. Ah, oh, the Batmobile boat has blown up. That was definitely heartbreaking. Yep. That's a cool shot of him, though. <laughs> Joy Gasm. Oh. I often wonder if that was just, like, uh, improvised. Not scripted. I have a feeling. <laughs> he misses him. Oh, that just looks painful falling on the stairs. Everybody's wearing black. Don't. No. Don't kill him. He won't learn nothing. Who makes these real boxes? And where can I get one? Well, you gotta be quite intelligent like the Riddler and have some engineering skills. Ah, uh, too much work. So, is this a couple hours later, you know? No, it's five seconds. Like... Alfred woke up, got him in bed, passed up his head. Sounds like Batman Forever converted. It's just like Mr. Dark Manhattan just throwing stuff together from different times. A couple of years jamming together. Yeah, it's all about waking up to some bad news. 
what if Batman didn't come after him? Like, he figured it out and just decided not to go. And they're just like, so what, what do we do? A lot of costume changes for the villains. Like, Max appears, buddy. Exactly. That's the thing. is Every time you change a costume or do something, you make a legit action figure. That's why they do it. It's also why in every movie, they change the suit just a little bit so they can make a whole new toy marketing line. It's the one, like, one thing they didn't do in The Dark Knight Rises. And if you notice, when they released the toys... They were. They tried to make the suit a little bit, the suit a little bit more gray, to make it look different in the action figure lines than just being the same as the Dark Knight. Yeah, um, green light. Hmm. Who who's been using a lot of green light? And not the drug from Black Lightning. What is a clock? A match? Which pawns and valves have in common? I love him just putting it all together. Mr. E. Anima. Yeah. And this is the first time we get like our you know, climactic end of movie secondary suit, which has yeah carried over. <laughs> I mean, you think about it, they even did it in BBS and Justice League. Suit's pretty dope, though. Oh, it is a dope suit. It's more silver, gray silver. I love the bat. I mean, that was exciting in theaters to just see Robin come down. I like the look of the suit. And I just, I mean, it just bugs me. Like, this Robin suit is awesome. And it's only in this movie for a little bit. And then in the next movie, they just decided to, like, completely blow it and try to do a Nightwing suit. Like, why not just give us the Robin suit? Like, Give me Batman and Robin working together as a team, as a partnership, as, like, the dynamic duo. Not, you know, I don't, I don't want to see it, like, I want to see them as, a, like, a well-oiled machine. Could you imagine, like, a scene like the Martha Rescue, but having Batman and Robin working together at that kind of impact? That boat is dope, though. I like how all the vehicles match. Uh, of course. I mean, how else would you do it, you know? <laughs> yeah. If, if you're going to create a, a style, might as well, you know, create a style. And that's everything you need to know about why this Commissioner Gordon is horrible. Like, I love it. He shakes the dude's hand. Like, yeah, Batman's going to go do our job because we can't do anything. to have such an inept police department police force for a major city like that
the uh, the fact they're playing Battleship is intense. And the boat didn't last very long. And this uh, is Robin drowning, because I can only imagine trying to uh, swim in those suits. <laughs> right. Turbulence. I mean, I remember every line from the Riddler in this entire film. Just because. Well, it's Jim Carrey, I mean. <laughs> I mean, everybody you know, was... Like, at the time, I mean, this is, this is peak Jim Carrey. Like, if I think they weren't going for a 66 vibe, and you got Jim Carrey as a as a Riddler, you know, he could have done something, uh, I think he could have done something a little different. Maybe nowadays, or, you know, yeah. with it, you know, within the last 15 years, as opposed to 25 years ago, if he'd have been the Riddler, it'd have been somebody, it'd have been completely different. It's kind of like, like the idea of Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mr. Freeze works, but it's just it wasn't in the best done. Like he could have done it great. Holy Rust of Metal Batman was funny. I'll give you that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when I heard it, even as a kid, I was like, oh, that's funny. I was like, that's just like Robin from the, the TV show. I always like this part. Like, that's for my mother, my brother, my bro you know, like, this is for me. That's an awesome shot of him just standing there, like, epic lighting, just... Yeah. I mean, there's... There, there was quite a bit of, you know, there was a lot of good stuff about this movie. Um... And I think beyond, you know, editing and, and problems on set and stuff like that, like, it probably could have been better. Yeah. I agree. So, yeah, I mean, that should be a more important scene of him saying, you know, like, basically deciding not to uh, kill him. Yeah, I think so. I think it should have been more important. And what, what bums me out here is, like, that's it. That's it for Robin. Like... That's 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 his big scene. 
And he's just a character that in every live action version he gets shortchanged. Um in Batman and Robin he gets shortchanged. Um you know, that's why the Uh, the scene in Titans of Robin fighting is so awesome in the alley because you actually get to see him fight and do what he should do. <laughs> me and me. Yeah, I mean, for the introduction to Robin in this movie... Um, granted, he should, you know, with no training, <laughs> he should get caught, of course. Right, I mean... That part I never liked. The God am I? Like it just was. I don't know. It was over the top, and like I know it's gonna be kind of funny, but I don't know. It was just weird, like and not in a good way. Right. And and right there, like. Well, you know, what is this like? This new sparkly leotard and and his Riddler white devil hair. Yeah, like, seriously, it came out of nowhere. Like, when they were on their way here, his hair was not that long. It didn't look like that. And he was wearing a completely different out outfit. It's like, oh, Batman and Robin are here. I got to get changed. Like, it's not like your girlfriend's coming over, man. I, I feel like, man, like I hate he's like, there's some great concept setups and everything. Like, the idea of, like, maybe, like, the whole, the idea of having between, choose between, like, Chase and Robin would have been great in the next film or something, when they've had a real chance to, real, of, to build a relationship. Uh, you know, the idea of, like, Bruce actually trying to put his life together and realizing he can be both Batman and and Bruce Wayne is a very important development for the character that kind of just gets shortchanged in this movie. Um, you know, the fact that he doesn't have to kind of pick one or the other, he can do both. He has the ability. Um, And then, like, what's and that with... one? That one batarang did some major damage. Yeah, like, everything's exploding. What's up with his floor? Like his thing was it, like digital. Like it's like ever since the power goes out and everything just shifts. Like right there. Like what, Batman was the, like standing on the only spot he could stand on. Right. Um... Maybe he would have taken one step to the left or right. He could have fallen to his death. Well, he'd at least fallen. This rescue scene's pretty awesome, though. Big, big dive rescue. I like it. Yeah. You know, um, 
it is easy. They're both falling down the same way. He catches her, then he goes to get Robin. But my, what makes me upset is, like, even if you watch the animated series, so many times does Robin, like, not really do anything. Like, Batman has to save him. Or you just feel like Robin always gets shortchanged. Right. Which I feel defeats the purpose, you know? Um, yes. I mean, yeah, he's there. Um, you know, part of the reason that he's there is as, you know, the colorful distraction. But Batman wouldn't allow him out unless he could handle himself. Um, you know, if, if there was if there was any doubt in Batman's mind that um, that night was the night that Robin would die, like <laughs> that's why I he wouldn't a, let him go out. That's why I have a huge problem with Carrie Kelly as Robin because. You know, the Dark Knight Returns takes place after Jason's murder and everything. He doesn't have another Robin. And then this girl who has no training puts on a store-bought Robin costume and is helping him. All those coins... straight-up murdered Two-Face. He just distracted him so that he could choose his own death. So he could choose his own death? I suppose maybe he didn't have any more grapples left, <laughs> but like this is so weird. See, so, yeah, I, like I said, I like the resolve right here. Not because I have to be, because I choose to be. Yeah. I do like that this film shows us Arkham. Like, we didn't talk about it because, like, there is an earlier Arkham scene that was deleted. Um, but I like that, you know, they acknowledge Arkham and they try to present it with that gothic feel. And, you know, this, this movie is post uh, the animated series. Well, it's the um, first live action Arkham. Exactly. Isn't it? It is. And, you know, I hate the white and black pajama look for Arkham patients. To me, it's just extremely cheesy. That was the one thing that made me mad in Gotham when they got to Arkham because it looked good at first. And then they showed them like that. And it was just like it was just too much. Yeah. I really wanted them to explore Arkham in. BBS or Suicide Squad more than what the little tiny wink we get at it. Yeah, um, I haven't I haven't done it side by side or anything like that, but there's a scene from the um, I, I'd have to check out Suicide Squad and. Justice League and the trailer but it seems like there was a scene that looked like the guy who was laughing who who like was there to replace Luther 
for the time being. I don't know. I just I wanted to see if it was the same guy or the same shot or something that they were just that they even recycled from that movie to put in Justice League to change the way that ending scene went. Yeah. It's just the Arkham thing made me think of it. I love this shot. And it makes it makes no sense, but I love it. It's a great shot, but honestly, why would they use like the stunt cowl that's got the ears that bob when he's running? And was that even really him? You know, like was oh, that? I mean, it could have been anybody, but they they had the the cowl where the ears wiggled when he ran. Makes me wonder if maybe it's, it's like, just a pick- closing shot, like. <laughs> It, it makes me wonder if it was just like a pickup shot, like a, it came to them in post, and they were like, "All right, just whatever you can find, shoot it." Second unit type thing. Right. right. I mean, and then we got you two here. Um, pretty uh intense, you two, like so. But yeah, that was a uh, Batman Forever. Great, good time. Well, you know, this this had a this had a pretty good soundtrack. It did. I mean, the the Seal's Kiss from a Rose was a big deal and I mean what's crazy is now like you can't even find this soundtrack. Like if you try to find anything, it's just the Batman and Robin soundtrack. Um But yeah. Um, it was great to go back and watch it. This is definitely one that I could watch all the time. I thoroughly enjoy this one. Like, if you just ask me my favorite Batman films, this one, because of all the nostalgia, and then, like, if I had to pick my favorite Batman movie, like what I think is a great Batman movie, it's Batman Begins. Um, yeah. That's, I think, the best Batman film. Um best origin film ever but this one is just it's a good time and, um, but yeah we we've, we've been chatting um, about it. yeah it's the batman begins is definitely like it's the, it's the best batman film like it's really grounded but it's also comic booky um that gotham even though it's just a city seems more like like your gotham city whereas the dark knight and the dark knight rises just seems like a city yeah i mean because the narrows and some of gotham was built on sound stages um so it definitely had that controlled feel that's why that's why that one's my favorite from a looks point of view but i really love how in um the, the the dark night like it feels more real world um, that's what's so interesting about that trilogy is just how begins kind of sticks out <laughs> but then I I always like we said when we, when we did the dark night was just I love that it started with him and his suit from the first film and then in the film we saw why he gets a new suit compared to all the other yeah. films where they just start where Batman has a new suit so all right listeners let us know what you think. We enjoyed watching Batman Forever. We enjoy watching these movies together, even though we live so far away. Um, So let us know. 